Okay, so this is going to be a quick video. Um, oh, it's great reading the last few uh, comics that I wasn't able to finish because well, I, I would have gone. I wasn't like my usual visit, like because I, I only returned the ones I had to return the ones I had returned last time. So I decided to review them then, and even then, like I think it is kind of dumb to hold off all the books and review them all at once. You know, if I can return some, I go to the candy poker, then I might as well return them. And this time it actually worked out perfectly because I did end up getting, not that I needed to, but I did end up getting all the books I needed except for the ones that weren't in yet, the ones at the library itself. I usually wait until that visit to get them, the visit I am going to get them. I mean, that, like, tomorrow's visit, basically. Not uh, usually have to do that, that all at once, but I decided, you know what, let's just do that. M mainly because of last time, like, almost every book I wanted was out of stock. I think that was it checked out. It made no sense. And actually, that was the one, one of the ones I got. Anyways, so the first one up is a did not finish. I cannot stay. I didn't, didn't like this one. I think along with Thor and Doctor Strange, my Star Wars, the, the Star Wars, the only Star Wars comics I will read are 2000, like 2010 beyond probably. I would say mid 2000s and beyond like any of the stuff that came out before is just too dated i don't like like i know I, I guess it's, it's weird because i wouldn't mind this if it was like spider-man if it was um avengers or on dc side um robin or batman but it's had all those tropes that i hate i just kind of like love a lot of dialogue it's kind of boring but honestly i think even in a spider-man book i would say it's just kind of boring but i could have free passes it was just kind of dated not in the best way uh, this is one that a lot of people seem to like. This is Dark Horse era, so pinch, uh, take my opinion with a pinch of salt. This is that one, at least. This one is the one I used to really like. I used to. This is the one I, I liked the first time I read it. This time around, and this is, I would say it's the third. First time, it's like every other time I don't like it. Um, first time I, like, I hated it. Second time I loved it, and this is the third time. And I, like, I'm kind of indifferent to it. I'm kind of like... So this is the only book that's not in yet. Like, all the others, all the others are. And I, I said to myself, because I was reading this book, I was like, okay, if Star Wars Volume 2 is the only book that's outstanding, won't come in until Thursday, or until, like, after my visit tomorrow, since tomorrow is Thursday, and I'll be uploading this, no, I'm uploading it in all the time, no one makes it Wednesday. Um, and I said to myself, if the only book that's not going to come in is tomorrow's book, I'm very, I'm very distracted, apparently. Um, the only book that isn't coming in is going to be book two. I'm going to, I'm still going to go. And I'll say, you know, screw it. I'll just not get that book. And that was the only book that didn't come in. It was the one thing that happened, because I think one time before, I was like, all right, this is the one book I don't care as much about. I'll go in no matter what. And it was even just a day up, I believe. And it's the, that's the one book that doesn't come in, and I'll, I'll go tomorrow either way. No, I'll go tomorrow either way. I'll go tomorrow and not the next day. And it didn't happen. It was like it was like I think it was that book, and then some others. It's just the way their entry loan system works. Survival Street was a reread that did not improve with a reread. Sometimes it will. There, there's uh, so many books that I've read again. I've li I've enjoyed like preacher preacher technically, but I'm gonna say preacher. I just wasn't in the mood for it. I guess, or I just like thought it would be much different than it actually was. I don't know why I thought with Preacher the first time I read it. Because the second time I read it, obviously it became my favorite comic of all time. And it was just a first issue. Maybe the first time I read it, I was just like, I wanted to read something quick, and the first issue was the longest issue, I believe. Um, no, it's not. Except for the specials. It's long. I, I believe it's not the long. I believe it's the shortest. I, Jesus Christ. Except for the specials, I believe the first issue of Preacher is the longest issue. And maybe I just want something quick. I don't know, but the second time I read it, like, that's why I hate saying that with Preacher, because I don't want to anyone to get the wrong impression. Um, it was just the first issue, and I loved it even more, like, the second time I read it, and then the third time I loved it even more. Like, every time I've reread Preacher, I've loved it even more. It's, in, for context, it's my favorite comic of all time. Survival Street is a great example of... A comic that everyone is saying, like, oh, every comic is like this nowadays, and it's just so political. Like, this is the comic they're talking about. When people, when people say, oh, no, you're overreacting. Yeah, that's in that comic, but it's not too bad. And, you know, obviously, I will always say it's their opinion. I will never, ever say, like, 
they're being too annoying about it or they're being i will say that but i will never say like they're wrong to think that and they're not true comic fans no they see something in a book that no one that no one else really cares about what they do and it's their opinion but this is the comic i'm talking about this is just like as subtle as a kick to the balls and just as i guess the exact same thing last time and just as pleasant at least with the man eaters and home those were entertainingly political entertainingly on the nose and preachy but this is just boring and not interesting there are certain elements i liked like the gurgle one of the characters names is gurgle because it's puppets and she has a drug addiction but it's portrayed as candy like ice cream and that I was that was very interesting to me. I liked that. And I, I I liked the conclusion too. And just everything about that I liked. I wish if it was more like it, it would have been nice if it was more than like that kind of stuff. Like it was more just them living in the real world and like you know just a comedy, not just oh political, all oh, uh, immigration and no oh, uh, Trump this and no oh, uh, uh, NRA this and gun rights this and political statement this. It's so annoying. And it was, like, so on the nose, too. They have something called Fox News, but it's spelled F-A-W-K-E-S, not F-O-X. Isn't that funny? Like it's just, I, mean, I feel like even people, I don't like Fox News either, but it's just so, it was so stupid. It's just way too on the nose. Like, you, you don't have to even agree with what they're saying to still hate it. Or you, you, even if you agree with what they're saying, you'll still probably hate it. In fact, there was a review on Goodreads who felt the same way, but I was the same thing I was saying. Like, they agree with everything that the, the comic was saying, they still found that annoying. Uh, Eat the Rich. This was still entertaining. I still I still really like this book. I'd love to see more out of this story. Um, I mean, technically, probably not. It's just a mini series. It does kind of wrap up. Kind of open ended enough where they could make a sequel. Um, this one's a definite, definite re read for me. This is probably, out of all these, even though it's a reread, I would still count it. I mean, still, most of these are rereads anyway, so I would say this is the pick of the week. Or pick of this week, you know, kind of thing. Like, think of, think of even though it was the same set of books, think of the first set of books as one week, then this set of books as the other week. I don't know when to pick for last week. I would have to check here. I'm going to check real quick. Because I did take a snapshot of it. I have been taking snapshots of the comics. I'm glad that I do, because at the end of the year, I do plan on doing a the best of what I've read, and obviously a lot of them will be library books. Um, I have to mind that. That was not favorites. Clearly I wasn't glad of that. Okay, so... I'm trying to bag that, that I don't like to do the rereads. So there's something I read for the first time. It's kind of hard to do that, though. Uh, America... Uh, America. No, uh, Avengers Arena. Probably would be that one. Yeah, honestly. This one's summer. Nope, this one's summer. Is that, is that pick of the week for that one? But I don't like to, I don't like to include rereads because I'll, I'll reread them six months later. Now, would that, oh, well, it's always going to be like the default and it's kind of unfair. I, I'll, I'll always say, like, and I should start doing that too, like, begin, like actually saying it. Like, if I, if I, this is of the rereads. This is my favorite of the new of the ones I read for the first time. This is my favorite. I think all these are rereads, honestly. Except for the Star Wars book, and I didn't even finish that, so that's gonna count. Coda, I don't, I I don't like Simon, Simon Spiker's writing. I really don't. This time it was actually kind of worse. I think it, it, it did get better as it went along, but when I was, um, I I, I, read, I read two of this per day because it was four issues, and this actually was one of the new ones. Sorry, I, I, I forgot to mention that. So Survival Street. Eat the Rich and Coda were the three uh, were three of the many books that I got this next time. The next time I know that tomorrow's for tomorrow's set of books. But I read these early because I had too many checked out. So I was like, you know what? Let's read these now. Get, get them out of the way. So technically, what well, you didn't see these before um, when I went over the books before. When I was doing it the first time. Like, okay, so make, make, make it easier for you guys who are confused. Um, let's say February 12th was the ones like Star Wars. That was February 12th's visit. This is February 22nd's visit. So it's not actually that, but I'm just going to say that. So you guys know what I mean. But this is February 22nd's pickups. And then obviously tomorrow's too. But 
mostly February, February 22nd. Um, I didn't even need to mention it, but these I read two, two per day to get, um, each read was five volumes, five volumes, five issues, but these, but Survival Street and Coda were four issues, so I can read two per day. Um, either read I read one, one day, and then and after that was two per day. Just to get those finished in time, and with plenty of time to spare. So I thought I would finish them by today, but there was no way. Um, but going back to it, yeah, Coda, I, I don't like Simon Spider's writing. I, I just, even Coda, like, I liked it the, the, the second time I read it, but even then it was like, oh, there's an ongoing, a new mini series. I'm not going to finish it. And I, I forgot all about that because I picked that up. I was like, for once and for all, I'm going to read all 12 issues. There's this, there's that new mini series that's out right now. And it's not even, the trade hasn't been out yet. So once that trade comes out and my local library has it, and supposing the fact that it's a mini series, I'm saying mini series, it probably isn't, it's probably an ongoing, then I will finally finish that series. But till then, no. I almost didn't finish it. I almost didn't read it. I was almost like, there's no point in me reading it. I'm not going to pick up the next volume and finally finish it. You know, that kind of thing. Actually, I probably, I probably still could have done that, though. Because they don't have volume three, so it's going to be kind of weird. I don't know why they don't. It's so weird that they, they won't pick up that like that same library that has volumes one and two. Let's say it's the same library. We'll have volumes one and two. You'd think that they would. Don't have volume three of a three-volume series. They did, they did it with Middle West. It was so annoying. They did it with ten volumes, ten volume series, or six, six hardcovers. It was twelve, sorry, it's twelve. It was, no, actually it was. But anyways, no, sorry, it's five hardcovers. They had four out of five. It was six, I don't know, but the ads were scalped. It was a really damn good series. I'll probably do that, I'll probably do that with scalped. I'll finally finish it, because I think they had, out of the ten trade paperbacks, I think they had nine. All I have to do is read the last five issues elsewhere. I think you all know what I mean by that. Next one is Sandman Volume 1, reading this series again. Um, I did mention it last time. And this one was still good. Now, starting this book, before I even started, I was like, I remember a bit too much about this series. I was thinking more and more about it. I was like, I remember that. I remember that. I remember how that storyline ends. I remember how that storyline ends. How long was it exactly since i've read uh since i read sandman this is the previous time i read sandman um and but still like reading this it was kind of like with preacher not like preacher because preacher is like leaps and bounds above sandman in my eyes sandman is probably if i had to pick it would probably be my 15th favorite comic of all time probably no it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't even be 15th if i did like top 20 comics of all time it would be an honorable mention, and it would be a brief honorable mention. As much as I have come to appreciate Sandman for the 50th time I've read it, because Sandman took me forever to appreciate, I, there's still that part of me that's still like, it's good, I like it, but... And it's like, a lot of it is just it's way too verbose for me sometimes. Fables and Reflections is still my most hated Sandman volume. I, I meant to skip that next time I read it. There's no reason for me to read it, except for that one story with the headless guy. I forget what his name was. You remember, because if I remembered his name, it would be like, oh, that guy, that story. You know what I'm talking about. But that story. Um, but Sandman, like, I, I you, you, you already picked it up. Any, everyone and their mothers has read at least the first volume of Sandman. I don't think my saying, if it's good or it's bad, will sway anybody. I do like it, though. I've got, like I said before, I've come to appreciate it, and it's not changed. Um, Joy, uh, Hellblazer, Joyride, Hel uh, Andy Diggle's run starts, begins, ends, uh, starts, begins, starts in the middle of, end. I don't know. Honestly, I, while I was reading it in the middle of it, I was like, you know, I could be none the wiser. This is his last run, last volume is in his run. Because the way the library had it, it was just, it was random Hellblazers after the first, what, like, ten volumes or so? Six volumes? It wasn't even ten. First, like, seven volumes, let's say. And this one, I, I, I just wanted to read this one. I was like, you know what? They're not going to have, it's not going to go in order. Let's just pick up this one, because Andy Diggle's running. I really like Andy Diggle. This one was okay. Probably one of Andy Diggle's weakest comics, weaker, weaker, weaker comics. And it's still good. I still liked it enough. And got better. At, like, the last, last storyline was really good. But even then, it's pretty damn forgettable. That's not... Something that should be said for either Andy Diggle or John Constantine. Justice League International Volume 2. 
still it's decent enough. Like I said, like I said, in my Instagram review, it's a bargain bin book, but one that you should like one that you buy. You're like, oh, Justice League International, New Fifty Two, Dan Jurgens. Let's check it out. Not not expecting much. Let's check. Oh, and, and Lepresti does the artwork. Let's check it out. Let's. I'm not expecting much. And you read it, and like that was decent. And then like a a few minutes from then, you forget everything that happened in the book. You know, you read it before, but you forget almost everything that happened in the book. And that's what this book is. It's forgettable. It's a nice little time waster, though. I would say if you find it at your bargain bin, comic shop, and a comic shop's bargain bin, to pick it up. I would say you should pay no more than ten bucks for this book. Honestly, sixteen ninety nine for an admittedly thick book isn't bad. It just has a few more issues, like two more issues in an annual than your average comic will have. Because, yeah, two more. It's already six issues with the, like the, like the 7 to 12, like six issues. Then you get the annual, and then you get the, um, a random issue of Fury of the Firestorm. It's actually written, co-written by Ethan Van Skyver. Which I really, uh, Kind of funny. I got from the series Sirens, book two. Somehow even better than the first one. This has been, actually, no, sorry, no. This is my pick of the week. This is my pick of the week for this time around. This go around is my pick of the week. This is a must read. Get the Omnibus is worth every penny. There's a version of it that's used very good for 30 bucks on Amazon. If you don't mind your books used, I would say pick that up. That's a damn good price for an Omnibus. It's a 600 page Omnibus. So it's not like, super thick but it's worth every penny this is so damn good so much of this i was the one thing I, one minor downside is that i the ending was a bit like it wasn't terrible or anything like that but i kind of feel like i was like oh yeah that's right too the comics are still going on these characters still went on to other books and it's like oh so this is going to lead into this book and then, okay cool but that was that's comics for you one of the one of the many reasons why i moved from why actually why I'm getting so many image comics nowadays is because a lot of the series that I buy have definitive endings or at least are over. And there's no like oh uh, like I mean a bad example, but Dead at Seventeen isn't continued into another series. Um, it actually, isn't. But my, why I say bad I, my bad example? Well, Josh Howard recently on his Twitter said, "Hey, there's a Dead at Seventeen new series." It's gonna be a different. It's gonna be the same story, just told in a diff different perspective, but new content for Dead Seventeen. And I had gotten the complete collection, thinking it was the complete collection. He said it was a complete collection. He had reassured all his fans that that's the complete collection, and that this will be something different. I foolishly believed it would be like a video game, like a Telltale kind of game, or like a board game, or like anything but an actual comic. But it was. It's not from Image, so I will ignore it as. I, until the, at least a trade comes out and maybe buy it if it's on Amazon, I doubt it. It's an Indiegogo, and as much as I want to support them, I kind of can't. I don't have my own credit card, and I'm not trusting my own credit card. And the, the ones, like my parents, don't trust anything that's not Amazon with credit cards. Anyways, moving on. Uh, Batman by Brian K. Vaughn was not bad. It was nice to see how Brian, how Brian K. Vaughn would write Batman, but it says earliest work in, as, a, as an advertiser on the back see his earliest work and it shows is this guy ma massively improved by like a white ass margin the widest margin possible like he really he i swear to god he like sold his soul nah that's, 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 not, that's, not, that's, not, that's not a good comparison but i swear to god he like spent the next two years just practicing and practicing and practicing went all to the best scholars and learned from them and read all the best comics and really studied comics because he is one of the best writers out there today now i can't stick today because i haven't read any of his recent recent stuff but his saga so far for the first i would say read the first i would say 15 issues to be to be on the safe side i've read at least the first first 15 issues and the only reason why i stopped was because i found out the series was coming back I didn't want to get to issue 54 and be like, now what? Because I wouldn't be able to get comic shop because I was still in pandemic times. Um, but now that all 66 issues are out, maybe I'll get back on it. But it was so damn good. His Paper Girls, I read that series. It's, it's all over. It's only three issues. I read that like three times. I actually want to say four. And all four times has been like phenomenal. 
Uh, his Why the Last Man, despite the kind of meh ending, is phenomenal. My third favorite comic of all time. So he is a damn good writer. His Batman, his Batman is just mediocre. But for Bat for Brian K. Vaughan, and when you hear it, his early earliest work, I'm willing to give it a free pass. Um, Batman Volume Three. I am Bane. This is Tom, Tom King's Ryan, and it's decent enough. You know, nothing in here that's extremely offensive for Batman fans. Uh, I don't know if this was the one. There's a few things. In I don't like Lady the Bat. Cat. Bat. Cat. Like it's, a, it's not Batman. It's not, it's not how Batman or Catwoman should be talking to each other. I know it's a cutesy thing, but you can do that with Harley Quinn and the Joker. That would make sense. Harley, Harley Quinn is insane, and Joker is insane, and Joker would be doing it to fuck with her, and Har Harley Quinn be doing it because she's insane. You can make that work. But Batman and Catwoman it just sounds stupid. But other than that, like I, I, I'm not the kind of guy to nitpick a book if it if it at least intrigues me, and I will always be the kind of guy to do headcanon. You know, oh, this is not how Batman's written. Well, that's not that's not Batman. That's uh, Alter Worlds Batman. Even though it does take place in modern DC continuity, that's not the Batman we know. And the Batman that's portrayed in, let's say, James Tinian's Detective Comics that everyone loves, that's the real Batman. And that's right. I'm not the kind of guy that's like, oh my god, this book ruined Batman for me. I'm never picking up a Batman comic ever again. No. I understand those who do are, but I can, I'm the kind of guy who was able to, has a, has a superpower of headcanoning. Or, or, or I would say, of headcanon. Batman flashed the button I had to read in between. I am Bane and I am Bane. It was just, it was one of those things where it, was, it collects issues 20, 20, 21, and then 25, 26, and then those individual, and it was missing issues in the middle, I had to read with this, because that's where it takes place. So, this one I, I, I really do enjoy. I wish that, I wish that, I, I don't like you saying I wish, that sounds really lame. It been really not, it, it, Jeff Johns should have been in charge, more in charge of Rebirth, because if we, because if he was, we would have gotten more like this kind of writing. Because he would have taught Tom King how to write better. And this is coming from someone who doesn't totally hate Tom King's writing. And finally, my guilty pleasure, number one guilty pleasure comic, Asfar. Also known as, also, also known as All-Star Batman and Robin. I would say that getting the absolute edition of this comic is worth every penny. This isn't out of print. I'm actually going to double check, but this is, that's a guilty pleasure comic for me. And it's just so bonkers, off the wall, crazy. I love every page of that comic. And now this is a reread. I've said it before, so now, I'll just, now I'm saying it again. I, I do 100% recommend it. It's not as bad as people are saying it is. Number one, because of headcanon. And number two, because it's just, it's interesting. Like, I don't understand why people hate that book. Like, it's not that bad. At all, I really enjoy it. It's just, it's. I understand why people don't like it. It is very um. Yeah, you can get it for fifty eight bucks from the third party seller, I believe. But you can get it for fifty eight bucks, almost half off. No, it, no, it's no, it's not. It's not. A, it's not Amazon Prime, but. It's worth every penny, even getting a full price. It is just insane, off the wall, crazy, but it's a fun kind of crazy. You have absolute fun with it, and I would love to see it continue. And honestly, I can't say much more than that about it. It's well worth checking out. That is it. Let me see if close up. I need to check. I want to check. Twenty four minutes going over. How many books? One. Get you know it to that down. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, fourth, thirteen, twelve, thirteen. Twelve books. I count twelve because I didn't review Star Wars during public. I didn't count. 